he gets asked about the possibility of leaving for TV, and he yeah, tiptoes around it. And then after Sunday's game, it becomes clear something's up. And now Monday, let's hear from McVay. It's now obvious that he is thinking about leaving, and he is engaged in a very public and open conversation about whether or not he's going to come back. Here's McVay on making his decision about what he's going to do in 2023 going to take the next couple of days um, to really be able to kind of reflect. Obviously, a lot of conversations with various people um, that will dictate and determine um, the decision that's best for me, my family, um, the Rams, and a lot of people. And that's kind of where we're at with that. This has been years. This isn't like, uh, this isn't a new thing. Um, this is, uh, this has been something that I think has gone on for those of you guys that know me for a handful of years, but it's a beautiful challenge. I wouldn't change this for the world. I, this needed to occur. This was a necessary part of the growth and the development, um, you know, for me to be the person that I need to be instead of worrying about some things that maybe you worried about before that you wouldn't have realized had you not gone through this experience um, and being around the players and the coaches and the way that they've handled that. And so for that, I am grateful. And that's where you just figure out, all right, what is the best way to continue to move forward um, in the right way to be the best coach that you can possibly be? Um, because I don't get the sense in the least bit I'm done coaching, right? It's just a matter of what does that look like as it relates to the immediate future um, is more about, you know, what you're really working through right now. All right, let me just say this. Sean McVay's 36. I got a nephew just about his age. And I would say to Sean, if he were my nephew, and it's, God, it makes me feel freaking old to say this. But old timer, what, what up, it? old timer, old man Florio? Listen, go ahead and go ahead and play the piano as the background music while I say this. But I would say no, to Sean, don't, I hey, Sean hear nephew this. Sean. Right. <laughs> Sean, you're, you're already done. Sean, Sean, you're the last one to figure it out. I mean, you're Bruce Willis That's what in it sounds sense. like. It's over. Right. For you to be talking about it like that, yeah. it's over. Right. And there's a point where you're going to piss a lot of people off by engaging in this public soliloquy about what you're thinking. Sean Payton just left. Sean Payton didn't feel the need to wallow publicly in what am I going to do. He just left. It was gone. Now, we know what he was trying to do. He was trying to get to Miami, but that's fine. Whatever it is that Sean McVay is trying to do, just do it. You don't have to talk about it because you know what, Sean? If you wake up this morning and you decide, like George Bailey at the end of It's a Wonderful Life, I Want to Coach Again, You've had a vision of what the NFL would have looked like if you'd never existed or whatever. The three Christmas ghosts came to you. Whatever it is that caused you to have an epiphany that you're going to stay. Man, that's a lot of toothpaste to put back in the tube now that you've sprayed it all over the place. You never should have done that. And sometimes I think that people do that to make it easier for them to do the thing they're thinking about doing. Sure. That once you stand up there right. and just spew all this stuff that makes it clear that you're thinking about leaving, 100%. it makes it easier to walk out the door right. because you can't come back now. Right. I, I think that's what it's doing. That's what he's doing. He's tactically laying down the groundwork. He was letting, He basically just gave us a conversation to lead us down the road that – you know, he's exhausted from coaching, and that's not going to happen. He just he might need a break, you know, here in the immediate future or something. I mean, that, that he's he is. That's if all. Patrick Mahomes was his quarterback. If Patrick Mahomes was his quarterback, he wouldn't need a break. Well, I think it's, and I'm not. This isn't a, a Matthew Stafford thing. This is just the situation in the Rams. They sold their soul. That's the common theme I'm hearing from folks around the league. These people who've been resentful and angry about how F them picks is effing up their ability to do their job because their owners say, why don't we do what the Rams are doing? Here's why we're not doing it. Because they went all in, they won their Super Bowl, and now it's all crumbling and McVay's running out the door before it does. That's how people are reacting to all of this around the league. And of if he course. had a deck that was stacked in his favor, if he was heading to a second straight Super Bowl appearance, he wouldn't be having these thoughts. Five and 12 is what's causing him to have these thoughts. Uh, uh, agreed. I mean, there, there's no doubt about that. That's where it is very much like Sean Payton. He, I think he's looking at the writing on the wall a little bit about the team and going, wait, things aren't going in the right direction. I'm not sure I want to be here. You know, for the for this, for the rebuild, for all the tough things there. And I think that's where he's, you know, trying to soften the blow also within the public forum here because there's some things that, you know, don't look necessarily right. You know, that that's the other thing here. You know, one, hey, you just won the Super Bowl. Yeah. And then you asked for you got a new contract. 
So that just seems weird right off the get-go. Wait, so why didn't we think about this last year? I mean, why was this not a thing last year? You know, after you won the Super Bowl, before we were asking for money, but then also you got to take into some of the things he's probably told guys. You know, uh, that's where he's got to soften the blow here too and make sure he plays it the right way. I mean, how much of the conversations between McVay r- led to Aaron Donald coming back and Stafford coming back and hey, man, come back here. We're gonna build something. We're gonna do that. So he's led people down a path of like, hey, I'm gonna be here. We're gonna do this together. So now he's trying to delicately, delicately get out of town. And, yeah, it's it, to me, that's what it seems like. Again, it's a team that's got a lot of issues. They got holes across the board. You know, They got a quarterback that's beat up a little bit. They got Aaron Donald who's paying a lot of money coming to the end of his career. There's no draft picks. And, yeah, by all due accounts, this totally seems like a guy that's going, wait, we're not going to be very successful here the next few years. Let me take a year off and then find a new job somewhere else and, you know, with a better situation and better assets and to, to, to support me. And last year, I think the deliberation was, do I leave a team that possibly could compete yeah, for right, another Super Bowl? Right. Get caught up in that. When you are celebrating the Super Bowl you have just won, it is very tempting to think you're going to do it again. And that's the cautionary tale for anyone else who is pondering their future with a team as a player or a coach or a GM or in any capacity. Don't let the fact that you just won the Super Bowl be a major factor because chances are you're not going to win it next year. Something's going to happen. You're probably not even going to get back next year. It doesn't happen very frequently. The Patriots are the only team in the past 30 years that have mustered the ability to go back to back. Not quite 30. The Broncos went back to back. And then the Patriots did, but it's been 20 years since the Patriots did. There's a reason that no one's won back-to-back Super Bowls. The Patriots have qualified for back-to-back Super Bowls during their incredible run that may never be duplicated, but just don't assume you're going to be back there. Don't do it. Don't make that part of your thought process. Don't let that lure bring you back if you're thinking about taking Jeff Bezos' money to go work Thursday Night Football. I mean, that's the other problem, Chris. And I don't think this is about TV. Because he's going to find out they are not going to throw the money at him that they would have a year ago. First of all, there's no the shine is off the apple. Right, right. And there's no seats available. Yeah. Now, now, look, if there were no seats available a year ago when Sean McVay is carrying around the Lombardi Trophy, maybe somebody makes a seat for him. But this year, they're not going to make a seat for him. The seats are full. The big money jobs are gone. He's going to be, if he wants to do TV, the number two guy at Fox, maybe. I don't know if Tom Brady doesn't knock Greg Olson down to number two or have to go to a studio somewhere. And the studio jobs don't pay what you get when you're the the analyst at one of the major networks, whether it's NBC, CBS, ESPN, ABC, Fox, or Amazon. No, nobody so wants to work. Happen. Nobody so wants I, to work I, in the studio every now, now anymore. Everybody wants to no, announce no, games. God, I mean, no, no, Every player you talk no, to, I don't no, want to be to. in the studio. I want to announce games. Oh, really? Is that right? <laughs> no. If they're in the studio, they got to deal with guys like us. Yeah, right. Um, so uh, I, I think this is more about taking a timeout and picking his next spot. He's watching what Sean Payton did, and I think that's the model. Because it's not like Payton got some great TV job. I was fascinated by what Peyton may end up doing in media. Yeah. And so it was just a it was just a part time right. placeholder for him to stay in and around the game while he picks his next move. Yeah. And if he does it for another year at Fox, so be it. But hell, that may be the easiest thing for McVeigh. Hope Peyton leaves and just become the new Sean for Fox. You just cross out Peyton and you put in McVeigh and you just kind of linger there for a year yeah. and wait for your next opportunity. Somebody sends the Rams a first round draft pick that they'll trade for some established veteran player elsewhere. And then McVeigh becomes a coach again. I, I, I wouldn't be shocked by that at all. I, I certainly could see that, you know, I mean, maybe even multiple years. I don't know. Again, he's young. He's got lots in front of him. You know, one of his mentors was John Gruden, who we saw went into the booth and was there for a significant number of years before he jumped back into coaching, jumped back into coaching again. So, yeah, I I think you're, you know, you're kind of, I kind of see it the same way. I don't think this is going to be like, I don't get the feel that this is going to be McVay, let me get out with the Rams because I got some other job lined up already. That's not the feel I get like no, Sean, right? No. It's, it's totally like, hey, he's going to, he's getting away. Sean Payton was another job lined up and then it got blown up and then he went to the TV thing. This seems like, yeah, 
TV, let me keep my name in the spotlight a little bit, figure out my next moves, you know, think about that a little bit, and then, you know, go from there. And that, that's kind of what this has the feel of. Um, Two things. Yeah. First, I think one of the things he learned from Gruden is walk away before they make you run, mm. right? Because Gruden hung around Tampa Bay, it fell apart, and they fired him. It's better to walk away on your own terms, although Gruden landed on his feet as the – top analyst at ESPN after he was finally fired by the Buccaneers. The other thing is this. I made this point yesterday, and I was talking to somebody over the weekend as it relates to the Broncos' mindset. Once the Broncos accept the fact that they are going to give the Saints something, potentially, for Sean Payton, and right. look, even though they haven't agreed on compensation, they kind of have. There's an understanding of what it's going to take. The Broncos know it. It's like going to look at a house yeah. that, you know, why would you go look at a house that you have no intention on Yeah, paying. you know the general price. Why would price. you want to do that to right, yourself? Right, you, you You know what the price is going to be right. if you want to buy this house. Mm -hmm. You're pre-qualified. The Broncos are essentially pre-qualified to go tour this house. My point is this. Once you start preparing to write a check that big, why only look at one house? Why not call every team that may have a coach that may be ready to move on? If you're going to give up a first-round pick or more to get Sean Payton, why not call the Ravens and see if it's time for John Harbaugh to move on? Why not it's call the Patriots and see valid if point. maybe Bill Belichick would be ready to go? Why not call the Rams? It's, it's a family call. It's the Waltons and the Cronkies. Hey, Sean's done working for Stan. Sean wants to move on. Hey, Stan, what would it take? <laughs> Hey, Sean, <clears throat> Sean, not, not that, not that the prospect of going to a team that probably faces the same rebuild that the Rams do will be all that appealing to Sean McVay. But, but, but my point is no, this, they, they, it's less a of a rebuild, there, Mike, it's the, yeah, the Broncos It's less. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, well, yeah. you got, uh, well, well, you still got a quarterback situation. You got to figure out, Hey, they could trade Russell Wilson plus two first round picks and a third round pick for Matthew Stafford if they want to. But I I'm, I'm kidding. Um, my point is this, for the Broncos or any other team that's contemplating the possibility of trying to hire somebody else's coach, I think that's a potential factor for Sean McVay, and maybe that's why he's making it known. Maybe that's why he's making it known to everybody what he's thinking about. As teams are considering their options for coach, maybe he's hoping that somebody has the light bulb flicker say, well, why don't we call the Rams and see what they would want for the guy that's going to walk away from them anyway? I, 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 it's, it's very logical what you're saying there. I don't know if that's his master plan. If it is, it's, it's brilliant. It, you know, if it is, maybe that's why he's kind of saying these things publicly. It opens up the forum for people to understand, you know, where he's at in this process and that he is open for business, right? Maybe that's why he's doing it, Mike. Um, but th it is interesting. And I, I hear your point too. I mean, it's something we've hit on a little bit and I know you've hit on it. I, I don't understand why it doesn't go on more as far as, you know, the acquisition or the trading for coaches out there. And, you know, like you've said, you know, more times than not, after you get to a certain part of years, teams and the head coach are kind of looking to maybe go their separate ways anyways. I mean, we heard that a few years ago with John Harbaugh and the Ravens. Not that they, you know, didn't dislike each other. It just kind of, I think there was a thought in the NFL that it was maybe time for them to go different directions. That happens. Um, that'll be, be interesting. It really will. And I don't know where this McVay thing's going. Yeah, it seemed like it was a TV step away thing. That's the feel I get, but maybe there is a bigger play here at, at hand as far as, you know, positioning yourself for one of these opening jobs, open jobs. It's harder to sell that to the guys you're leaving behind. Yeah. It really is. Definitely. That's the, that's the personal. If he's that's yes. simply laying the foundation to jump to another team, that makes it harder to tell Aaron Donald, Matthew Stafford, right. everybody else who's on that team, because it really does create the Indiana Jones scenario where he's sliding under the falling stone door. Yeah, and it makes back it look like you pulled a slick one. Runs onto the next team. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, th I really do think, I'm going to keep it simple. I think that this is a basic psychological thing by Sean McVay. To talk about it so much, it's impossible to stay. That that's the only way he's going to walk away. If he just burns it down to the point where... Because, look, if he stays, he's going to deal with this every year. He's Brett Favre contemplating retirement. Every single year, this issue is going to come up. 
He's not going to be able to talk this down and shout this down. We get to the end of every season this from this point forward, and that's going to be the conversation. Is this the year that he walks away? So I think it is, and I don't think he'll be coaching anybody else. My point is, if you're thinking about offering somebody a first-round pick or more for their coach, maybe maybe you can just throw it out there and see if it sticks. Yeah. Why not? I mean, there's so much going on right now from the standpoint of who are we going to hire, who are we going to talk to, why not be as creative as and broad and flexible as possible. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.